1990, a nearly complete specimen of Tyrannosaurus rex was unearthed. Scientists from Montana State University found that these bones were not totally fossilized. Sections of the bone were like fresh bone and contain what seems to be blood cells and hemoglobin, which is a protein that makes blood red and carries oxygen. Now, they're still investigating these controversial discoveries, but common sense would say that if these bones really were tens of millions of years old, then the blood cells and the hemoglobin would have totally disintegrated by now. And the bones certainly shouldn't be fresh. More recently, in 2002, scientists split open a T-Rex thigh bone and discovered flexible, even elastic, soft tissue meat still inside. Microscopic examination revealed fine, delicate blood vessels with what appear to be intact red blood cells and other type of cells, like osteocytes, which are bone-forming cells. These vessels were soft, translucent, and flexible. The mummified carcass of a duck-billed hadrosaur named Leonardo also turned up in Montana. The preserved soft tissue covering 90% of the fossil contained muscle, nail material, a beak, and skin. His last meal consisted of a salad of ferns, conifers, and magnolias, seasoned with pollen from 40 different plants. This type of evidence would undoubtedly lead one to realize that dinosaurs probably aren't as old as previously thought. But for those of the evolutionary mindset, they're busy scrambling trying to prove how dinosaurs and soft tissue survive for over 65 million years. Because of course, dinosaurs died out way before man came along, right? Right? Paleo, that's the paleontology department. Hello, could I speak to Jack Horner? Um, yeah, who's calling? This is Bob Enyart with KLTT Radio in Denver, Colorado. That's Bob Enyart. Um, yeah, let me transfer you over to his office. I think he should be in there right now. Yellow. Hello, Jack. This is Bob Enyart with KLTT Radio in Denver. Uh -huh. How are you doing? Good. Jack, I sent a letter to Bob Harmon a few weeks back offering the museum a grant of $8,000 to do a carbon-14 day test of that soft tissue T-Rex you guys dug up. And he said he would forward that to you. And I'm wondering uh -huh. if you saw that or considered it. Well, um, um. Carbon-14 doesn't Isn't, work on something that old. I, I understand that, and normally we wouldn't expect to get soft tissue out of a T-Rex skeleton either, but sometimes science proceeds by crossing your T's and dotting your I's, and you guys might have other things you'd like to carbon-14 at the same time. In fact, in the last couple of weeks, I've been able to raise a little more money, so that's up to $10,000 now that we'd be honored to give you guys if you would consider doing that test. Well, we can't do that test. You can't do that? No. Do you mean the museum doesn't have the laboratory? We certainly don't. Okay, well, we're happy to pay the expense of having a lab do the test in addition to the $10,000 to the museum. Um, <laughs> uh. Do you know how carbon-14 works? Yeah, I'm familiar, and I realize it's useless for anything over maybe 50,000 years or so. But I've done a talk show in Denver for 15 years, and mm -hmm. there's a group of folks interested in science. Of course, that discovery caught their attention, and they thought, well, it'd be logical to do this, to just go ahead and do it, even though nobody would be inclined to do it, just like nobody would be inclined to look for soft tissue inside right. of a T-Rex. Well, yeah, and, you know, we're still trying to figure out what it is, what it's right. actually made of. Right, exactly, whether it's hemoglobin or whatever. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Jack, is the amount too small that it's just not worth the consideration? No, that's not it. Okay. Um, what if I were able to raise more money? No, that the amount of money has nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, because carbon fourteen doesn't work on something like this, right? Your results that you get could be all over the place. Well, they should be infinity. It should be not datable. In other words, it shouldn't come back saying it's twenty five thousand years old. Right. It should be infinity. And so well, that'll be a worthwhile well, infinity infinity isn't exactly what you get. Okay. I mean, it's like it's like trying to date a piece of concrete. Right. You would have to have carbon in it. Right. You wouldn't use carbon fourteen. Now the skeleton is not fossilized, isn't that true? Or largely not? Well, it's cal- it's you know the the bone is made of calcium phosphate, mm-hmm. um, and um, like I say, we're still trying to figure out what the actual soft tissue is. Right, and see, we were hoping that a test like this would just add a, another bit of scientific information. That, mm-hmm. that you would have at your disposal. And also, in that grant letter, we asked if it could be a blind test with five different specimens, and therefore then the museum could test four other specimens that you might want to have carbon-14 dated. And so you could put it all in the same batch, and those testing then will pay the cost of that. That'll be free to the museum plus the $10,000 grant. Um, let, let me let me tell you where I'm coming from here. Sure. All right. Obviously, your group is a group of creationists. Yes. And and um, and the spin they can get off of it. Right. Doing it is. Well, not going to help. Not going to help us. Yeah. So even though it's just a scientific test, they're they're not no, asking it's, for it's voodoo. Not a, or anything. It's not actually a scientific test. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Carbon fourteen dating something with soft tissue in it. <laughs> Jack, if I could raise twenty thousand dollars, would it be worth? I will talk to Mary Schweitzer about it. Okay. okay. I appreciate that. And how about this? I'll resend you the grant letter with the amount of 20000 in it. And then you could talk to Mary, and we'll see where it goes. I, I want to know what group is sponsoring it. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's, um, I, I, I mean, I need, I need some really specific details about. Sure. And don't just, you know, tell it to me straight. Of okay? course. I've hosted I've hosted a daily talk show for 15 years. We're on a 50,000 watt AM station KLTT, mm-hmm. and there's a local church here, Denver Bible Church, mm-hmm. that's offered to help. But we also have pledges from any number of individuals in the Denver community. Okay. So we could, if you guys agree, we could send you the check within 24 hours. Okay. Well, let me talk to Mary and. Okay. Let me just talk to a few people. Okay. Because I don't want to, you know, I can't afford to have it turn into a circus. Right. Well, I do understand that, and I appreciate your time. So, okay. I, I will see Mary this next week. Oh, that's fabulous. I'd be happy to call you back in two weeks from now. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Jack. You're very welcome. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your host for Nova Science Now. Most of what we know about ancient life, and I'm talking millions of years old, comes from these things, fossils. You know, they're actually rocks. Over time, the bone and tissue has been replaced by minerals, but there's only so much you can learn from a rock. Think about how much more you could learn if, instead of a rock, what you found 
was the real thing. Peter Standring met some researchers who've uncovered some rare remains. Bones tell us almost everything we know about dinosaurs, the fantastic variety of species, their titanic size, their sheer power. The frustrating thing is that there's still so much we'd like to know that dinosaur bones haven't told us. Were they warm-blooded or cold-blooded? How different were they from modern reptiles? To solve these biological questions, today's paleontologists are starting to explore radically new clues from dinosaur skeletons. Christy Curry Rogers cuts into their bones to examine the pattern of what was once living tissue. And is it sort of like CSI for, for dinosaurs? It can be, sure. Sometimes it's kind of a different method of detective work. We can see in these cross sections of bones evidence of pathology, evidence of dinosaur disease, and evidence of dinosaur bones breaking and healing themselves. All of that stuff is available via the inside look at a dinosaur bone. Analyzing the rock that entombed dinosaur fossils is key to understanding how they were preserved which is the work of Christie's husband, geologist Ray Rogers. And I'm there to try to place the discoveries in context, to try to find clues as to where maybe best to look for fossils. We've been pretty lucky in Madagascar. For the last decade, the African island has offered Ray and Christy Rogers a spectacular excavation site. They work in an area of remote grasslands where dinosaur bones literally cover the ground an ancient graveyard where an unusually large number of dinosaurs died and were entombed by mud flows that preserved their bones. The, the preservation is unbelievable. The quality of the material is exceptional. This is a piece of bone from the Madagascar locality. It, in many regards, doesn't even look like a fossil. It's unstained, it's very light, it's not heavily, densely filled with minerals. You look at a, a dinosaur bone in a museum and it's brown, it's black, it's heavy as can be. Heavy because fossils are no longer hollow bones. Buried in the earth, empty channels inside the bone fill up with minerals, becoming dark and stained, hard as stone. In some cases, the bone tissue itself is completely replaced by minerals. It's difficult to probe dinosaur biology with bones that have turned to rock. But the Madagascar fossils were sealed in a clay-rich mud, preventing many of the chemical changes that happen to most dinosaur bones. This is typical of the Madagascar material. It is not heavily stained. It's not been invested with iron, with manganese. It doesn't look like a typical fossil. If you didn't know, you might think you're picking up a cow bone today, a bleached cow bone. I think this piece might be good, or maybe... The Madagascar bones are so perfectly preserved that Ray and Christy wondered if they might conceal clues about how these dinosaurs lived and why so many of them died in the same place. To find out, they turned to their colleague, Mary Schweitzer, a paleobiologist whose study of ancient cells and tissues might solve the mystery. We know the dinosaurs had to have cells, bone cells and muscle cells and gut cells and brain cells, and that's one of the reasons we can study them, even though they're extinct. Schweitzer's career defined itself in her native Montana when she was preparing one of the largest skeletons of a Tyrannosaurus rex ever found. I was working on the leg bones, and as I worked, I noticed a bunch of stuff. It was like, you know, this bone, there is hollow inside. And I was looking at this thing, thinking, this is really interesting. It was the inside of the T-Rex bone that fascinated Schweitzer, who made thin sections out of it. And in these cross sections of fossilized bone, she saw something that she and everyone else had thought was impossible. Round structures that looked like red blood cells, dinosaur blood cells. Inside those channels where the blood vessels would have run were these little round red structures that were all kind of lined up like a, like a train. And they were bright red and translucent. Nobody else had seen anything like that before. The very idea of blood cells in a 70 million year old bone was more than unconventional. It was radical. Nobody was imagining that dinosaurs might have had preserved soft tissues. Derek Briggs is curator of invertebrate paleontology 
at the Peabody Museum at Yale University. So along comes Mary Schweitzer, and she's starting to look inside dinosaur bones and has made this startling discovery about the presence of red blood cells. What was your initial reaction to that? Oh, I think the same reaction as everybody's, that this was uh, totally improbable. She perhaps misinterpreted the evidence or was exaggerating the potential for what she was seeing. So skeptical at first. Oh, yeah, definitely. Paleontology has been around for some time. One of the oldest professions. One of the oldest <laughs> professions. Has anybody else that you know of found similar things inside a bone? No. Why do you think it didn't occur to anybody? Well, because we have this clear understanding that part of all biological cycles involves decay. I mean, nature is set up to, to break down that material and recycle it. So it's just improbable that those kinds of very delicate structures would survive, particularly for millions of years. When you think about it, the laws of chemistry and biology and everything else that we know say that it should be gone. It should be degraded completely. But Schweitzer kept searching for organic remains where no one had thought to look before. Her mentor is Jack Horner, one of the most famous dinosaur hunters in the world. When his team found another beautifully preserved T-Rex in the remote Montana Badlands, the massive leg bone had to be broken in half for transport. And Schweitzer got to test fragments from deep inside the bone. The T-Rex bone was filled with a very unique bone tissue. When I turned it, you know, like that and looked down on it and saw this, this tissue that you can see right there in cross-section, I knew what it was. It's called medullary tissue, and it's what female birds build up inside their bones as a source of calcium for the eggs they lay. All dinosaurs laid eggs, and it made sense to Schweitzer that female dinosaurs produced the same kind of bone tissue. It looks different from the surrounding bone, and it meant the T-Rex had to be a mother, expecting a clutch of dinosaur eggs. It was really exciting for me. I thought, there's nothing in my career that could possibly be cooler than being able to identify the first pregnant T-Rex. No one had ever identified medullary tissue in a dinosaur bone before. But to be sure, Mary Schweitzer directed her lab assistant to soak the bone sample in an acid solution to reveal its structure so she could study it. What happened next would change the way that scientists thought about fossils forever. As I was looking in the microscope, the medullary material was no longer hard, and um, what was left was this curled piece of tissue that I was using forceps to try and flatten out. And when I poked into it, it was spongy. It was flexible and soft tissue. Flexible tissue from a 68 million year old dinosaur? Blood vessels. There they are. Transparent, hollow, pliable, flexible, branching blood vessels that contain small round red microstructures floating in the vessels. I said, this is not possible. Do it again. We got another piece of bone. We put it in the solution. We waited two or three or four weeks. Looked again, more blood vessels. We must have repeated that with probably 17 or 18 different fragments of bone. As soon as Schweitzer's discovery of dinosaur soft tissue was published, people thought of one thing. <laughs> Could we get a real-life Jurassic Park? No paleontologist believes we could ever get enough ancient DNA to clone a dinosaur, but could fragments of genetic material be extracted from this new tissue? I think anything is possible. If there are blood vessels and red blood cells preserved in a dinosaur, I think it's quite possible that there will be DNA there as well. Even without DNA, proteins from soft tissue could begin to answer real mysteries about dinosaur biology. Evidence of warm blood versus cold blood. Whether the large body size of dinosaurs is linked to large cell size. The Rogers have a theory that dinosaur mass deaths in Madagascar might have been caused by water poisoned by algae. This poisoning event wouldn't show up in hard bone, but they might be able to test the theory with dinosaur blood cells. The structure, I mean, there's a lot of structure there. Yeah. Yeah. If there's anything in this tissue that Mary finds that actually can trace a toxin, that would be fantastic. Things like disease, diets, things like that from soft tissues that you can't 
extract from hard tissue, from, from true fossil bone. The hope is that the Madagascar fossils will allow Mary to find more dinosaur tissue. So Ray and Christy gather fragments of their best preserved fossils. A few days later, the samples arrive at Schweitzer's lab at North Carolina State University. She uses the same technique that yielded soft tissue in the T-Rex bone, soaking the fragments in a mild acid that dissolves away the mineral part of the bone. But will she be able to find the same internal structures in Ray and Christie's fossils? There's only so much you can know from looking at the outsides of bones, but when there's soft stuff inside, the possibilities become almost endless. This is a single cell. Right. Through photos from her microscope, Mary hits the jackpot, pieces of biological history. Now see, this is really cool. It's what looks like vessels to me, connected together, transparent. And you can see right there, you can see the branch points and stuff. The Rogers are seeing inside their collection of fossil bone as they've so never seen it before. Structures that appear to be the vessels that once carried blood inside a dinosaur's body. This is hooked together. There's a transparent yeah, it's region. It's a tube right there. with stuff mm -hmm. inside of it. Mm -hmm. Branching, hollow, yeah, organic yeah. material yeah. that scientists thought could never be preserved in a dinosaur fossil. That's amazing. That this is from 65, 70 million year old bone. It's too early for these structures to reveal details like dinosaurs dying from poisoned water. But dinosaur soft tissue opens a door that no scientist thought even existed until Schweitzer's work changed that assumption. There's little doubt in my mind that what she has discovered are internal structures in dinosaur bone. And we may look back and say, well, this sort of approach to looking at fossil vertebrate biology has, has revolutionized the field. But we won't know that for some time yet. To get in there and to find soft tissues, to find blood vessels, to find cells, it is an opportunity to go to places that we never thought we would be venturing just 10 years ago.